Hi, my name is Pamela Coons, Associate Professor of Medicine in the Division of Oncology at Yale School of Medicine and Yale Cancer Center. I'm excited to announce ASCO's new open access journal, JCO Oncology Advances. As the inaugural editor-in-chief, I hope to support JCO Oncology Advances to become the premier platform to bridge the gap between accessible scientific research and clinical care. Stay tuned for more information, including new article types, at ascopubs.org forward slash JCO Oncology Advances. We look forward to seeing your submissions in spring of 2024. The guest on this podcast episode has no disclosures to declare. Welcome to the JCO Article Insights episode for the February issue of the Journal of Clinical Oncology. This is Gisele Carvalho, your host one of the ASCO Editorial Fellows at JCO this year. Today, I'll be providing a summary of an article focused on the association of axillary soft tissue involvement on outcomes for breast cancer patients. It was published in November 2023 and was partially presented at the 64th Annual ASTRO in October 2022. Although lymph node involvement in breast cancer patients is correlated with a worse prognosis, the impact of extracapsular involvement is still a matter of debate, and the implications of axillary soft tissue involvement are still not fully understood. There is some evidence indicating a decrease in disease-free survival for patients with less than four lymph nodes and with extracapsular extension, while other studies show that extracapsular involvement has no prognostic role in these patients and that the number of positive lymph nodes might matter more. Patients with node-positive disease may present with only lymph node involvement or lymph node involvement plus extracapsular extension and or axillary soft tissue involvement. The axillary soft tissue involvement can result from either direct lymph node extension through the capsule or direct microscopic spread from the primary tumor. It is pathologically defined in this article as axillary lymphatic channel invasion axillary soft tissue deposits, axillary blood vessel invasion, or any combination of these. This was a retrospective study of patients with invasive breast cancer who received treatment at Massachusetts General Hospital in Boston, Massachusetts from 2000 to 2020. Lymph nodes and surrounding adipose tissue were submitted in their entirety for histopathologic evaluation using hematoxylin and eosin stain and immunohistochemical stains could be added at the pathologist's discretion. Eligibility criteria included primary breast cancer and positive lymph nodes without prior or contralateral breast cancer. 2,162 patients were included. They were divided into four groups according to their axillary pathology. The first group was composed of patients with positive lymph nodes but no additional axillary involvement. The second group of patients with positive lymph nodes and extracapsular involvement. The third group of patients with positive lymph nodes and axillary soft tissue involvement, but with no extracapsular extension. And the fourth group of patients with positive lymph node and both extracapsular extension and axillary soft tissue involvement. Primary endpoints were 10 year rates of local regional failure which was defined as recurrence in the breast or chest wall or ipsilateral axilla, axillary failure, and distant metastasis. Among 2,162 patients, 58% had lymph node involvement only, 25% had lymph node with extracapsular extension, 3.5% had lymph node involvement with axillary soft tissue involvement and 14% had lymph node involvement with both extracapsular and axillary soft tissue involvement. 51% of cases of axillary soft tissue involvement were in the form of axillary lymphatic channel invasion. Median follow-up was 9.4 years. 74% of the cohort had hormone receptor positive breast cancer, 10% had triple negative disease, and 16% had HER2 positive disease. The groups with axillary soft tissue involvement, extracapsular extension, or both, had more advanced tumor pathologic features when compared to the lymph node-only group, 
including higher median size of breast tumors, higher number of malignant lymph nodes, and an increased likelihood of breast lymphovascular invasion. Additionally, more patients in these three groups received mastectomy, axillary lymph node dissection, regional lymph node radiation, and systemic therapy. The lymph node-only group had the lowest 10-year incidence of distant failure, 13%, while the group with extracapsular extension and the group with axillary soft tissue involvement both had a 23% rate of distant failure at 10 years. The risk of distant failure reached an impressively high rate of 42% for the group with both extracapsular extension and axillary soft tissue involvement. Considering 10-year local regional failure, the first group had a 6.2% rate, the second group a 5.7% rate, the third group a 10% rate, and the group with lymph node positivity with extracapsular extension and axillary soft tissue involvement had a 14% rate. The 10-year axillary failure rates were only 1.6% and 0.8% for the groups with no axillary soft tissue involvement, but rose to 4.6% and 4.5% for the groups which did have axillary soft tissue involvement. In multivariable analysis, including tumor size, grade, number of positive nodes, and receptor status, axillary soft tissue involvement remain significantly associated with distant failure with the hazard ratio of 1.6, local regional failure with the hazard ratio of 2.3, and axillary failure with the hazard ratio of 3.3. Of note, the number of axillary failures was overall low, only 4.6% in the group with both lymph node and axillary soft tissue involvement. Delivery of regional lymph node irradiation defined as treatment of axillary, supraclavicular, and internal mammary nodes, was associated with improved local regional outcomes in patients with extracapsular extension or axillary soft tissue involvement, with a hazard ratio of 0.5 and a p-value of 0.03, but was not associated with any improvement in distant failure. The authors described the main limitations of this study as the retrospective nature and the absence of genomic marker results. In summary, although current guidelines do not emphasize axillary soft tissue examination, this study shows the importance of reporting axillary soft tissue involvement beyond the number of positive lymph nodes and the presence of extracapsular extension, as there is an increase in local regional and axillary failure rates for patients with axillary soft tissue involvement even without extracapsular extension. Therefore, both extracapsular extension and axillary soft tissue involvement should be consistently reported in large, randomized trials as we continue to work to tailor local therapy to individual patient risk. This is Gisele Carvalho. Thank you for your attention and stay tuned for the next episode of JCO Article Insights. The purpose of this podcast is to educate and to inform. This is not a substitute for professional medical care and is not intended for use in the diagnosis or treatment of individual conditions. Guests on this podcast express their own opinions, experience, and conclusions. Guest statements on the podcast do not express the opinions of ASCO. The mention of any product, service, organization, activity, or therapy should not be construed as an ASCO endorsement.